Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to another RC Reacts for Leeds United versus Leicester City. And 4-1 uh, defeat today at Ellen Road. Not a good day at all for the Whites. A uh, couple of bits of news. Rafinha was out with an ankle injury. I believe he suffered that in the U23 last week. And Rodrigo was not on the bench today. And uh, I did I did not see the beginning of the game. I had it recorded, so I, I watched from the beginning of play, but I didn't see any pregame talk. And it looks like he was exposed to someone that tested positive for COVID-19. And so following Premier League rules, he had to be quarantined. That may mean he misses our next match on Saturday as well. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so two of our, you know, one of our recent starters and one of our big uh, impact subs and two of our really big signings this offseason not available for today's game. Uh, with, for Rodrigo, we brought Pablo Hernandez back in. So, you know, there's worse things that could happen. Pablo back from his injury, back to fitness. He got the start today. And let me tell you, he was pissed when he got subbed off uh, late, you know, around the 60th minute whenever he came off and uh who else did we so it was him on for rodrigo rafinha wasn't there so we went with uh jan paveda uh the youngster uh he came on in the second half um rafinha wasn't available so helder costa and jack harrison played the whole match but um anyway just to kind of be very clear Leeds is my team, and I've really never rooted for anybody else in outside of the United States, uh, you know, NASL soccer. Um, but if there was any team that I probably ever rooted for, it was Leicester uh, on the heels of their win a few years ago. I really liked their keeper, Casper Schmeichel. Of course, he used to play for Leeds, so I knew the name, both he and his father. And I really became a Casper Schmeichel fan uh, when he was in goal in, um, in the World Cup. So that's where I got exposed to him. Uh, did not want them to win, of course, but it is what it is. So let's talk about the game. Uh, early in the game, in the second minute, you can see Harvey Barnes scored for them. Leeds actually had the first scoring opportunity. Helder Costa took the ball on the edge of the uh, right edge of the penalty box, and he had a brilliant chip in, went over, all the way across, back post. Jack Harrison was there, and he put a header back into Bamford, who was right in front of the net, right inside the six-yard uh, box, and Bamford had a sitter. I mean, it was a sitter. He should have scored it, and he put it right into Schmeichel's bread basket. I mean, it was an easy save for Schmeichel because it went right to him. If he would have put it front post or back post uh, or headed it downwards, and you know, 90, 95% chance that goes in. Um, and then, of course, they literally play the ball out and uh, we get beat on a on a huge counter. They played it out real quick, very Leeds esque. Uh, I've got to say, Lester played a lot a lot like Leeds today in some of their attacks. And let me tell you, I don't. I've never really seen him play. Jamie Vardy looks class, and I know he's a little older, but that dude has pace for days. And Leeds is probably the fittest team in the Premier League, and every time I saw Vardy on the ball, he was leaving our guys in the dust. I mean, in the dust. He he made Koch look bad, he made Cooper look bad, and he made Stuart Dallas look bad. All three of them are international players for their national sides, and Vardy was just blowing past them. I mean, if we were talking football manager ratings, Vardy had a 19 pace and everybody else was about a 13 or a 14. I mean, he was blowing them off the ball, running into channels, and every time he got the ball, he looked dangerous. And honestly, probably lucky he only scored one. 
because he missed he missed one on a breakaway that he probably should have scored. Even the announcers said, you know, that's that's you know, you bet money on on Vardy scoring that one. So the first goal to Harvey Barnes, uh, he got, he took a pass from uh, it. It was Robin Cock actually had a shot at the ball, and he went to play it back. He actually got the ball from Vardy, and he played it back to Meslier, the keeper. <laughs> but a, it was a poor pass back, not enough pace on the pass, and b, Harvey Barnes was right there with two attackers up top, and I don't think he saw him because basically he passed the ball right into his path and he he put it away an e- easy goal um in the first half it looked like the rain played a really big role uh, against Leeds Le- Lester Lester got the early goal and then a 21st minute goal and at that point they started putting nine back in the box uh, much like Wolves did and we were down 2-0 and just could not get back in the game um, so I think the rain played a big role in the first half, at least our passing looked really bad. In fact, my note was, uh, for the first 20 minutes, shoddy, shoddy passing, just really bad. Um, not enough pace on the passes. Uh, we had so many passes, you know, square passes, that and we we reverse sides of the pitch a lot. We'll go from right to left, or you know, just just across the midline, back to the left wing, or vice versa to the right wing. We had so many passes that were intercepted by, you know, a roaming midfielder coming up, or even a even a a, a fullback coming up to make a play on the ball and beating our our wingers to the ball just with the angle and and the lack of touch on the pass. I I don't know what the deal was. I don't know if it was the rain. They were talking, the announcers were talking that it was a fast pitch, which we did see the ball slide off a lot, but I'm also wondering if that didn't necessitate a heavier touch on your passes, and we were not adjusting to that early on. Uh, In the first half, I saw at least five, five of our square passes get intercepted like that. Uh, the second goal, the one for uh, Telesman, uh, Meslier had a great save on the ball, but he had to knock it down. And it was, uh, you know, and I hate to bring it up, but you know, you guys know I do football manager on my channel. It was an, it was one of those FM saves where the keeper makes a great save, and the deflection could go one of twenty different areas, and it always seems to bounce right to the one guy for the other team, and that's what happened here. He knocked it down, took a took a bounce right to tell uh, Teal and he put it in. Easy goal, empty netter, nothing he could do. What got me on that one? Luke Ailing was standing up near the penalty spot and literally just stood there. After the save, there were you know, and it wasn't just Ailing. I don't mean to single him out, but there were there were three or four white shirt defenders. And none of them were moving. I mean, just and for Leeds not to be moving at a hundred miles an hour, that's you know, Meslier did what he could, but he couldn't save both of them. So anyway, I saw Dallas slip several times. Quite a few Leeds players on the pitch just slipping and sliding. I don't know if uh, poor poor uh, stud selection on the cleats. I didn't see Lester having the same issue. So don't know where that comes from. And I'm I'm thinking to American football from that, that, you know, your stud length could play a role there. I have no idea. And we were just fractions off. The passes were not crisp. Accuracy did not look like Leeds United. Just nothing, nothing at all. And Barnes and Vardy looked a half step to a step faster than everybody on, on Leeds' side. Moving in, so we were down 2-0 uh, at halftime. We come out of the uh, first half. Stuart Dallas scores off of a set piece. Uh, he played it into the box. They had a couple of players go up, and I think they actually screened Schmeichel, and it, it bounced past him into the uh, far post. Brilliant goal, but I think if Dallas says he, he, he meant that, I think he's lying. But, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Uh, but a nice set piece. Um, 
So we're 2-1, 48 minutes in, and we actually looked pretty solid in the second half, even though they scored two more. We'll talk about those. But our passing looked better. You can see down here, uh, passing accuracy and possession. Uh, they really started packing the box. We were able to control possession, you know, about halfway into their end of the field pretty much any time we wanted. Uh, Pablo had a great effort. There was a corner ball bounced out to him. He took, you know, he took a Pablo magician touch, cur curled it in. Schmeichel didn't even try to dive for it because he knew he did not have a shot. And it went basically right off the corner of the cross piece. Uh, definitely, you know, big woodwork rattled the, rattled the cage a half inch down and it, it goes top bends, you know, just that close. Um, their third goal, Vardy's goal, looked looked like a Leeds counterattack. He put now, you know, with the exception that it was him pushing forward and Leeds, it's usually six people pushing forward. But he moved into a channel, took a through ball, beat Cooper, um, really made Cooper look slow, and uh, and then beat beat Meslier for that goal. The announcers made made a note: Paveda is refusing to put balls into the box. And and I like Paveda. He's still young, has a lot to learn. I get that. But he would get the ball, and he's very dangerous with the ball. Um, but I saw him attempt several nutmegs, and he was very c content to pull the ball back out, play it around either direction, instead of when he had half a step, putting the ball into the attack and getting it into the box for an attempt. I don't know if that's a mentality thing. I don't know, you know, and of course I'm not on the pitch. I can't see what he sees, but from what I'm watching on, on the screen and, and again, the announcers even made, you know, that, that leads look scared to put the ball into the box. The penalty, Tielesman uh, got the penalty in the 91st minute. This was a VAR penalty. Uh, they called a foul on the edge of the box I think it was a VAR screw job. I think, we, you know, it was another VAR screw up. Um, there was a foul. I'm not going to deny that. But I, I think he had his right foot on the line. The ball and his left foot were outside the box. And uh, and he didn't go through him. He just, he just hit him in the back. And, uh, you know, three minutes later, you know, there was, a, you know, they attacked. We came back and, and uh, you know, I mean, you know, I don't know. But anyway, at that point, a fourth goal, who cares? You know, the only thing that's going to hurt is, is on goal differential. And I'm just going to end up as good as last week's game was for Patrick Bamford. And I like Patrick Bamford a lot. Uh, he was a step off tonight. He had the sitter on the header in the second minute. He had a second opportunity where he had a really nice ball through, I believe it was from Luke Ayling, a ball through the middle, entry pass, and he got he got first touch on it, and all he had to do was control it to his feet and then turn on it and shoot, and he probably scores. Instead, he got his foot on it, but it was a heavy touch, and it put it close enough where Schmeichel was able to come out and make a play and, and get on the ball just... Uh, Look, you know, he was just a, a half step, step slow tonight compared to the Villa game. And, you know, but I'm not going to get on him. I mean, you, you, you can you can moan about the result, but look, nobody has a 100% conversion. Vardy had three or four attempts tonight, and he only scored one. So, you know, I, you're going to have games like that. So, you know, but... Again, I, I try to look for the silver lining. I try to tell it like I see it. We got outplayed. Congratulations to Lester. But I also try to put, you know, be, you know, look and see, okay, what does this mean for us? Well, Lester is typically a top half team. They've won the Premier League in recent memory. So it wasn't that long ago. And, you know, they're in the top four right now. So you know, they are a good side. And outside of, you know, uh, an FM goal where, you know, where the keeper deflects it right to their one guy for an empty netter, 
and a VAR penalty. This was a 2-1 game. And it, I mean, literally, it was 2-1 until the 76 minutes. So, you know, we were in this, and we dominated most of the second half. Just couldn't get them to fall tonight. But, again, I look, even as bad as we played, we handled possession, pass accuracy. Uh, passes I'm not going to worry about just because it is what it is. You know, they collapsed on defense once they had the goal advantage. We had 10 corners. We we had some opportunities there. And uh, so, you know, Lester goes second in the table, 15 points. I said top four, but we had a chance to go top four. And we're still two losses in our last three, and we're still in 12th position. You know, we're basically mid-table, and we're seven points off relegation. So... I don't think we're going to be in the relegation discussion this year. And I said at the beginning of the year, as long as we finish 17th or better, that's all I'm worried about. We need to stay up. We're not going to compete for the league title. I don't think we're going to be in competition for Europa League. That would be nice. But, oh, and by the way, Villa, two in a row, eh? Um, I just saw that. We're creating chances. We have opportunities. It just wasn't our night. And, you know, that first half was was abysmal. And you can't can't paint that any other way. We got played off the pitch, and we were only down 2-0. And we had two two really good clear-cut chances. (laughs) I mean, you know, uh, and and could easily have been 2-2 at the half. And if we would have scored that first, guaranteed if Patrick would have put that header in in the second minute, Barnes doesn't score because they don't get that counter opportunity. It goes back to the middle of the pitch for a kickoff. So, you know, that that changes the whole complexion of the game. And, you know, a lucky bounce on the second goal. Third goal was legit. You know, he just looked, he just made our defense look bad. But I tell you what, I was impressed by Vardy. Oh, my God. Um, And then, you know, like I said, uh, Pablo, you know, we were, you know, literally a half inch away from another goal there that would have equalized. And then, you know, at that point, who knows what happens. But it is what it is. So um, one of those days, you know, you're going to we're going to have these days where we get played off the pitch. And again, 4-1 4-1 looks bad on paper. When you kind of look break down the goals, you know, I think 2-1 was was a definitively fair result. And, you know, the VAR penalty, the, I've talked about it, but two of those goals, you know, we could have probably another day and those goals, those don't happen. So it is what it is. But, um, yeah, I'm just – very disappointed, but, you know, hey, still support the boys. Bamford's going to get back on the goals again. Uh, I don't expect a hat trick from him again the rest of the season. But let's see, who do we play next? Saturday we play Crystal Palace, and they are right behind us, and they've got three losses in five. I think we win that game. I think this could be a game where we actually show – because look, at the end of the day, Leicester is a top top table team. Maybe not top two or three, but you know they're up there year in year out for the most part, top eight, and competing for Champions League, competing for Europa League. Those are the teams that we're going to struggle with. That everybody in the Premier struggles with. It's the t- teams that are m- mid to bottom of the table that we need to take points from. And yes, Villa won three in a row, but we put a three nil clean sheet on them last week. They only stayed up by one point last year. So they're a mid to bottom of the table team in reality. Um, but we've looked good against Man City, arguably a top two team in the league. Uh, we competed against Arsenal last year. We'll see how we do against them uh, in two weeks because we play them at Ellen Road. Looking forward to that one. 
But again, they're a club that we could struggle with. But it's the Crystal Palaces and the West Hams and the Brightons and Burnsleys. These are the clubs that we need to be beating. And then, you know, Wolves, South, you know, Southampton, Everton, you know, these are the clubs that we should be trying to pull points from, realizing that we're going to probably drop points to the Liverpools, the Man Cities, and, uh, you know, and then the odd Wolves, you know, I think a draw would have been fair there. My take on it this week, let me know in the comments what you guys thought. You know, again, outplayed, but, uh, you know, hey, we chalk it down, learning experience, and we move on. And hope for better next weekend. You guys have a good one. Take care. Bye.